What is up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, a lot of you ask me, what is the number one way to break into the world of quantitative trading as a junior or intern quantitative trader? And that's gonna be the topic of today's video, guys. But before we get into that, a lot of you in my one-on-one -on -one consultations are also asking me, what sort of brain teasers and problems do I need to be able to solve to pass that minimum technical bar so that I can become a quantitative trader? That's exactly why I decided to partner with quantquestions.io. Quantquestions.io is kind of like the lead code of quantitative related questions that are asked in interviews. On their website, they have various questions partitioned on difficulty and employer that you can go through to get a better handle of the type of problems that you're going to need to practice to land that six figure position. If you guys would like on checkout, you can use my discount code CODINGJESUS to get 20% off. Now, without further ado, let's get into the actual content of today's video. A lot of you in my one-on-one -on -one consultation have asked, how do I compete against people that are coming from MIT, Harvard, Stanford, etc.?" And really guys, the number one way to do it is to show passion via pet projects. Luckily, I have a client that I've worked with and the client via my guidance and direction has been able to build a really stellar pet project that he's given me permission to share with you guys in today's video. I'm gonna be linking this pet project below and if you would like, you can also visit his LinkedIn, check him out as well. All right, let's jump into the actual pet project. So obviously I'm not in front of my computer, so I'll be pulling it up on my phone, but I'll be overlaying the actual pet project for you guys to see on this video. The number one project that I usually recommend people to start with that shows passion, that shows dedication is building a Black Scholes option pricer. Now, if you read Option Volatility and Pricing by Sheldon Natenberg, you'll know that there's a lot of different ways to price an option. There's the binomial pricing model, for example. There's the Black-Scholes pricing model. There are other pricing models that change certain assumptions and relax certain restrictions. But the number one way that you are going to be understanding option pricing theory is through the Black-Scholes option model. Let's take a look at this person's pet project. I recommend that this person builds a Black-Scholes option pricer. And I recommend that they start off small. I recommend that they start off with a Python REPL application that literally takes in the five inputs to an options price, volatility, a stock price, strike price, time to expiry, and interest rate, and spits out both a call and a put value. The next step to kind of level up your skills and really create something that you're proud of that you can put on a resume is to now in, add kind of like a GUI layer, an interactive GUI layer. And the best way to do so is via a library called Streamlit. And that's exactly what this person did. So. If you look at what he did, on the left-hand side, you have a couple of the inputs that are required for the options price. Current asset price, strike price, time to maturity, uh, you know, volatility, risk-free interest rate, etc. Once you hit calculate, it spits out both a call and a put price given these inputs. All right? Now, if you want to take things a step further, because this is still a little simple, it's nice, but it's not really something to brag about, per se, in an interview. You can then take that and now visualize that. Visualize that by shocking the most sensitive inputs to an options price, that being volatility and the actual stock price itself, and generating a heat map that displays the call and the put values at various different volatilities and various different stock prices. Now what this individual decided to do is, they also decided to make those values configurable, which is once again, taking it a step higher. As we progress throughout this video, guys, you're really gonna see a roadmap as to how you build something from a Python REPL application to adding layers of complexity to make this something that gives you more bragging rights and is more impressive to both the interviewer and the employer, okay? Now, what this person did that he could have done a bit better is he could have actually made the values in the heat map green and red in the sense that greener values reflect higher numbers, redder values reflect no lower numbers. But where this would have really, really made sense would be if taking this project a step further this person decided to allow the user to input a purchase price for the call and a purchase price for the put so pay close attention if you're thinking of doing a project like this which i do recommend input a purchase price for the call or rather allow the user to for the call and the put you will then have a pnl for the call and the put given your inputs and given the purchase price then the heat map, instead of displaying just the value of the call, can now represent the actual PNL of the call and the put given the inputs and the purchase price. And that's when green and red make a lot more sense. Green is for positive PNL, red is for negative PNL. Okay? Hopefully you guys are following along and this is clear so far with also the visuals that I'm putting on screen for you guys. 
Now, as a quantitative trader, another component of your job is going to be interacting with a bunch of data and consuming that data. Now, I already recommended a couple of books for Python data analysis, which will be linked in the description box below, but you also wanna show the employer that you can actually mangle with, wrangle with, wrestle with, whatever word you wanna to use to represent your ability to proficiently uh, consume data. Now, what will usually happen in a quantitative trading firm is you might have like a data lake, a repository of data that quant researchers and quant traders will query in order to back test certain strategies, develop certain frameworks, and just in general test certain ideas. How do you involve the ability for a quantitative trader to use data efficiently with your pet project? What you might want to do, for example, is every time somebody clicks calculate, you save both the inputs and the outputs into a MySQL relational database. Use any relational database you want, that's not the point of this video. The point is that you are mapping inputs to outputs. What's an idea, how would you do that? Well, as a software engineer, an idea that I might have, for example, would be to save the base inputs into a table called the inputs table, for example. That inputs table might have, for example, six columns. The five base inputs, price, strike, time to expiry, volatility, interest rate, and a sixth column that is the calculation ID, for example. The output table is going to have all the values in the heat map, so it'll have multiple rows for every distinct set of inputs, and it'll have a couple of columns. The first two columns will be the vol and the future shock, or the vol and the stock price shock, right? The change in the actual stock price against the base input which, for example, in the base case, might be zero on the vol and zero on the actual stock itself. You might have plus one on the vol and zero on the stock, minus two on the stock and plus one on the vol, etc. The third column is going to be the P&L associated with that given uh, you know, shock and input, or it just might be the calls value. In fact, I think you should probably stick to the call value for now for simplicity. Okay, the fourth column is going to be the calculation ID that'll link that output to a distinct set of inputs in the inputs table. So once again, two tables, six columns in the first table, four columns in the second table. You can actually maybe even add a fifth column to the second table that is the uh, unique identifier for a given shock to vol and future combination. That becomes a little more involved, but at the same time, um, it just goes to show that you're able to think about data and structure data in a cohesive and cogent manner. Hopefully this video was able to help you guys understand the sort of pet project that employers are looking for. Guys, if you'd like to better understand the world of quantitative trading, I do resume reviews, technical interviews, behavioral interviews for quant devs, quant traders, etc. You can do so by uh, speaking to me one-on-one. -on -one. Link in the description box below. It's the Calendly link. If you'd like to watch this video up to a week early, guys, Patreon link in the description box below. You also gain access to my exclusive Discord. And if you would like to stalk me behind the scenes to see what I'm doing in real life, I post almost nothing quant related on my Instagram, but if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can go ahead and do so. Link in the description box below, guys. Keeping this video short and sweet, hopefully it was a really good example as to how you can differentiate yourself against other candidates. You'll be surprised about how many candidates have no pet projects at all. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Cheers.